After my playtime with Battlefield 5 at EA Play and during the closed alpha, perhaps one of the topics the community knows the least about at the moment is the new class setup. How Battlefield 5 is going to handle that differently, the new soldier archetypes, and the company. Now all of these features go hand in hand and will drastically change how you, the player, is going to interact with soldiers during live matches. Okay then, let's dive into this. The company is where we're going to start, because this is the brand new overarching system that combines all of the classes and the archetypes together, allowing you to customise lots of different soldiers rather than just picking one and then running with them. In previous Battlefield games, you would pick a class, so that's Assault, Medic, Support or Scout, maybe switch out some weapons and gadgets around a little bit, and then spawn into the map and go from there. There really wasn't too much more to it. In Battlefield 5, the company system takes things to a new level. Instead of just having one soldier for your assault class, one for the medic and so on, you're now going to be able to create and customise lots of different soldiers and then slot them into different roles for you to pick out when you're in a live match. These soldiers will be unique to you because you customise them with different looks which, as I understand it right now, will be possible both via in-game progression unlocks and the new microtransaction system as well, where you're going to be able to purchase different cosmetic items if you want to spend a little bit more money. So now, instead of just spawning into the map like you did in any previous Battlefield game as a support soldier for the German faction, for example, you're not going to look like every other German faction support soldier who's on your team. Likely, you're going to look very different and potentially have some different abilities and weapon options as well. And this is where the new archetype system comes in. Archetypes are distinct variants of the base class, so for example, in the closed alpha, there were two different archetypes for the support class. We had the engineer and the machine gunner. Now the engineer archetype had access to light machine guns in the alpha, that was the Bren machine gun, and for gadgets, he had ammo pouches and the AT mine. The machine gunner had access to medium machine guns in the alpha, the MG34, and for gadgets, the ammo crate and the flare gun. These are two distinct roles within the support class, and in Battlefield 5, you're going to be able to build soldiers around these archetypes, giving them a unique look and equipment setup. All of these soldiers will be available to you in-game. Any of them that you customise in your company can then be picked in a live match. That means you could be picking from potentially three, four, five, six different support class setups from the archetype menu if you've made that many different soldiers. And really it depends on what kind of player you are and whether you want multiple different playstyles or if you always want to have the same archetype, the same soldier, you could just make one and then only have that one available to you when you go into a live match. This means that you can adapt to different situations as the round progresses because you've got different soldiers set up in different ways. This applies to all of the classes in the game, so for example the Assault class will have different archetypes that you can choose from and you apply that to a brand new soldier. Maybe there'll be an anti-tank archetype and we know there's a grenadier archetype. Within the company you will then have full control to customise how that soldier looks and each archetype will have abilities that define its role. Essentially in Battlefield 5, rather than having one soldier per class that you then switch all the weapons and gadgets on to fulfil a different role within that class, DICE is adding that role system directly into the game so you can set up your soldiers before joining matches and then have all of those roles available to you at a click of a button when you actually need them. Now, this new system doesn't mean that DICE is going to try and build archetypes that are better or worse than others overall. In fact, I think it's going to make it easier for them to balance classes and different playstyles than it was in previous titles. With the team now setting out specific archetypes within classes and abilities to go along with those, the team can easily tweak ability values in different patches to make sure the archetypes are always performing as intended and have actual strengths and weaknesses compared compared to other archetypes in the game, making each archetype viable within the class that you pick. 
if you add into that equation that certain weapon types are restricted to different archetypes, look back to the support class as an example with the engineer and the light machine guns and the machine gunner and the medium machine guns, again you'll find balancing should, in theory, become easier. Not every archetype has access to every weapon within that class, meaning if you want to use a certain weapon, you need to adopt the playstyle that the archetype was built for. Machine Gunner in support is set up as a defensive class. You can only use the medium machine gun sights if you deploy the bipod. You have a static ammo crate that you can place beside you that other players can come up to and top their ammo off, and then you can take ammo from it as you need it. And you have a flare gun which you can fire high into the air over your position to highlight the minimap with any enemies that might be nearby. Each of the archetypes is going to be very situationally relevant, and picking the right one at the right time is going to be extremely important in Battlefield 5. On some maps, no doubt some archetypes won't be viable at all, and you might end up maining another one for the entire round, because that one suits that map more. I think it is worth me clarifying at this point, because I just mentioned weapons and how some of them are locked across different archetypes, that weapon customization has been completely revamped in Battlefield 5. The system has been completely changed. You're going to have far greater control, both in terms of what attachments you can pick, and what the weapons will look like compared to the previous game in the franchise. There aren't any variants in Battlefield 5. That system has been shelved, and instead, we're going to be looking at a much more modular approach. Now, at this time, DICE hasn't released too much more information, but I wanted to make sure I clarified that point so that people don't get confused. Now, beyond what we've seen already during gameplay, you might have also noticed that more of these archetypes will be coming in the future. If you look here, there's a lot of blank space on this screen, and it actually says more archetypes coming soon. Of course, at EA Play and during the closed alpha, we were experiencing a very tightly structured version of Battlefield 5 with lots of things removed, but DICE has described these future archetypes as exotics. Now, at the moment, very little is really known about what these will do, but purely based on the name, this sounds to me like archetypes that will deviate a little bit more from the basic class structure and offer a bespoke role, far more so than the regular archetypes. Not only that, but these new archetypes sound like they might be delivered as part of the live service for Battlefield 5, part of the progression system. The more you play, the more you progress, the more you unlock. It makes sense that the more specialised archetypes would be long-term goals for players to achieve and unlock, those things coming later after the launch of the game to make sure players have something to aim for, and once they achieve it, they get access to something that really does set them apart from the rest. Again, at this early stage, we don't know what DICE is planning, but based on previous titles like Battlefield 4, progression there allowed players dedicated to the game to unlock more and more items as they went along. It only makes sense that the same thing will occur here in Battlefield 5. And one other thing that I want to mention is the appearance of these three statistics here on the archetype page of the customised menu in Battlefield 5. Now, these were present during the EA Play build and gave us a look at specific archetype traits. They don't really have a name at the moment, but I'm going to call them traits because that name hasn't been taken up by anything else. We have Agility, Suppression Resistance, and Blast Reduction. All of these are graded out of five and at the present time are all different depending on the archetype that you choose. So for example, the Engineer archetype has four out of five Agility, three out of five Suppression Resistance, and two out of five Blast Reduction. Whereas the Machine Gunner has five out of five Agility, four out of five Suppression Resistance, and just one out of five Blast Resistance. These traits appear to reflect the roles of each of the archetypes and will likely play a part in how you engage with different soldiers during live matches. If you came up against a machine gunner pinning you down with his MG34, a sniper firing shots at him, activating the visual suppression effect, that would likely take longer because the machine gunner has more resistance to suppression. There does appear to be a lot more depth to this system than meets the eye, and for me, I think that's really going to provide a lot more longevity to the game, simply being able to play in different styles and different roles. 
So for now, that's the class setup, archetypes and the company explained for Battlefield 5. This really is a big change for the Battlefield franchise and I'm surprised that DICE hasn't yet revealed more information about how it's all really going to work. Perhaps at this point they still haven't 100% locked down the system. But thank you very much for watching, I hope you learned something new today, because in researching all of this, I found out a few things myself. Make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications switched on, click that bell next to subscribe and check you have got them switched on, that way you won't miss any of my future videos. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.